Hello everybody and welcome to Investment Station. Today is a crypto episode and we're just going to cover three projects that I'm pretty bullish on and I'm personally invested in. So interesting episode to see what I look at in the crypto space. What we're going to do, we're going to come, we're going to go into each one of those projects and we will cover what they're about and just some key points about why I think they have a lot of potential. Obviously, nothing I say in this video is financial advice. You have to make your own research before you make any investment decisions. And anything we cover is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Um, at the end of the video, at the end of the video, we will talk a little bit about the market and where it's heading because the last few days have been pretty hectic. A lot of uh, drops are happening. You know, 30, 40 percent of the market cap has been annihilated. Um, Bitcoin, you know, crashed by 30 to 40 percent. That is really, really significant event. Um, and we'll just talk a little bit about where I think the future is heading and what sort of influence, what sort of influential elements we should be looking at going into that future. So without further ado, let's jump into it and we'll start off with Phantasma. I gotta give it to them. Phantasma, first of all, did a lot of work on the website, which is looking a lot better than what it was before. And now it is more like it, it is more transparent to see what they're about and what they're doing. So, what is Phantasma? If you couldn't tell by the logo, it is a gaming system. It's an ecosystem for both gamers, developers, and artists to come together and collaborate. So, basically, let's just give an example so it can be more understandable. Uh, let's say you have a game like Fortnite or Call of Duty, one of those big games. You have obviously the gamer side where people have fun, enjoy, pay money for different skins and so on. And then you also have the developers that keep building different worlds and um, different, I don't know, weapons and so on. And then you got the artists that are creating the, the artwork within the game. So Phantasma is basically trying to build an ecosystem for, for all those three individuals to come together have fun and also work for you know tokens and rewards and that's pretty much it that's what phantasma is about the other thing so let's just jump into why you know some of the points that i like about phantasma first of all they have a lot of experience they've, they've been in the crypto space for you know three or four years now so they're obviously learning and keep developing and keep growing that's what i really like to see about a project that that there's things happening that there's more development, more participants, the community is growing, games that they're releasing are being used on more platforms, and there's more demand for that sort of service as they keep growing. The other thing that I like about them is their tokenomics. They have two different tokens, Sol and KCAL. Sol is the government governance token, and KCAL is the utility token. So KCAL is used for different functions within the ecosystem such as paying fees voting email chat everything is controlled by the kcal and soul is more of the government's token so basically you know anything that has to do with project future uh and voting on different um games that's what the phantasma token is about the soul token and that's the one that i own most of compared to the kcal token which is the one used for people who are actually participating in the ecosystem now, the other thing I like about Phantasma is that it's eco-friendly and it has low fees. So that is very desirable in the crypto space. The other thing that I like about it is the smart NFTs um, functionality they have within the ecosystem. So the difference between an NFT, first of all, NFT for, for people who don't know, is a digital asset. So it can be a photo or, a, you know, a different skin or a weapon uh, that is digital within, you know, the gaming system that they have. Smart NFTs are fusionable, so you can actually add tokens to the NFT. So, for example, I have a sword for a game. Um, I can add uh, Ethereum or, you know, uh, the Phantasma Soul token into that NFT to be locked up in it to create more value for that NFT. So as you know, the tokens go up or anything like that, that NFT will keep increasing in value, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty much it for Phantasma. I really think that it has a lot of future because the community keeps growing and they keep developing on that ecosystem, creating more games, creating more content. And obviously as that grows and more participants come in, the project and the token of it will increase in value. All right, so the next project I want to talk about is called VIDT. 
And what VIDT is about, it's a project that basically has been built to validate digital data to ensure it hasn't been corrupted or manipulated in a certain criminal way. And then they also have the ability to create NFTs. Now, there's a video that I want you guys to see, which explains it a lot better than I do. And after that video, it only, it's only a minute and it's really nice. Um, after that, we'll just go through some points about why I like the project and why I'm personally invested in it. So let's go into it. In our rapidly digitizing society, the risk of fraud and manipulation of data is advancing. In any business process, files and copies travel along many devices and networks, making them vulnerable to fraud. VIDT DataLink makes any file verifiable in seconds, either automatically through the API or manually. This is possible thanks to the GDPR compliant VIDT DataLink architecture. VIDT DataLink is powered by Binance Smart Chain using the VIDT BEP20 smart contact for fast, reliable, and cost-effective data anchoring. For extra security, VIDT DataLink also anchors data on LTO network for each certification and batch anchors periodically on the Ethereum and Bitcoin blockchains. Current integrators include organizations in oil and gas, accountancy, legal, education, and more. VIDT Data Link. Data integrity verified. So let's go through some of the main points that I like about VIDT. The first one is that their code is very simple to use and very efficient. It doesn't take that much time to verify files and it's the simplicity of it gives the value for that project. The other thing is that their token is deflationary. So as time goes by, there is less VIDT tokens available. So it creates the perception that as time goes by, the token value should be increasing in value as there is less and less of them available. The other thing is that they have a good community of developers and um, already use cases as discussed previously. They already have clients that are using the system in order to validate their data. Also government, you know, different industries, um, you know, they need this sort of service in order to ensure their documents are secure and they're not being corrupted or manipulated in any, cert in any certain way. And that's pretty much it for VIDT. Um, simple, easy to use. Oh, and you're also able to create NFTs. That's another thing they're working on. So it's just creating more services for that project. And that's about it. So let's jump into the next one. All right, last but not least, Litentry Project. I actually made a whole video about this project. So if you want to get more information, please click the link above. Litentry is basically trying to solve the identity issue within a decentralized space. So for example, if you want to apply for a loan with one of the DeFi projects that are happening out there, you will need to be verified in order to ensure that you have the financial position in order to pay that loan off. And that's what Litentry is trying to do, to verify people in a decentralized space where it's a space where people who don't want to be verified or don't want to be identified can be. But if you want to use certain services, obviously you will need to be verified. So for example, if you need to you know, go into a certain game to compete and you need to have a certain points, you need to have certain points or ranking, then Litentry will be able to verify your wallet to ensure that you have that sort of credentials in order to participate in that game. So that's pretty much what Litentry is trying to do. The other thing about it is that it is completely based in China, where it has a lot of exposure and already a big community. So that's one of the things I like about it. I know that China just came out with, you know, they cracked down about crypto, but they've, they've been doing that for years. It's no big news. Um, and I think that the crypto space will grow in the whole world and if you know countries are not going to adopt to it they're just going to stay behind so even though china is you know still unsure how this industry is going to be applied they will still obviously use it in the future the other thing i like about it is influencers guy from coin bureau you've probably seen him online if you do like the crypto space has been growing his subscribers exponentially in the last you know year or so and he is personally invested in this project and actually has a whole video about it 
So the more influencers there are that uh, and that like the crypto projects or are investing in it, the more obviously people will be investing in it as well, and the more exposure it will have in order for it to get to get adapted. The other thing is, it is a project that has a huge potential to become one of the power chains on Polkadot. For people who don't know what that means, in a nutshell, it means that it will be able to be compatible with other th services on that ecosystem and also provide the services that Litentiary has to those people that are participating in that system. So Polkadot is basically a huge system, just like Ethereum, um, that will have different projects on it in order to pre create that you know, governance system to provide digital services to one another. And by having a parachain on Polkadot, you basically have a real estate within that ecosystem in order for you to provide your services. So by doing that, Litentiary will just have more exposure and hopefully more adoption in the crypto space. And that's pretty much it. Three projects that have use cases. Also note that the, the last you know crypto crash in the last few days made these projects very cheaper than what they were. Um, so I'm slowly buying into this project now and it's slowly accumulating more of these tokens because I believe they have big use cases in the future. All right, guys, so that brings us to the end of the video. Okay, a few words before we finish up. When you invest in crypto projects, you have to make sure that they provide some sort of value to the market, especially in a growing um, space, okay? If you look at a crypto project and say, hey, these are things that might be valuable and might be used in the future, then this project might have potential. You also have to consider competition and the like, but essentially, if you're investing in some sort of crypto coin, don't invest in it just because someone told you to do so, or just because the, you know, oh, there's not many tokens or that. Make sure you have a look at the fundamentals of what's behind the token and how it's going to be used. Last thing about what's happening recently with the whole crypto crash, Remember guys, when the market is crashing, it's sometimes a good time to buy in, right? A lot of these projects are selling in a discount, especially for the amount of value they can provide in the future, okay? Now, I'm not saying go and put all your money now in the projects I just talked about, but just think about it from, you know, the general, um, you know, market emotion. When things are going down, usually it's time to get in. When things are going up infinitely with people thinking that it's going to the moon, that it's maybe a time to start selling what you have, okay? In the next few weeks, I believe the crypto, you know, the, the I guess the market would either balance out, might keep going down a little bit more, but essentially everything that comes down must bounce back up especially with the use case of crypto. Um, this technology is going to lead the future. From my perspective, it's going to be adapted more and going to be accepted more. So buying when it's you know early days for this sort of space is always a good time. And obviously not financial advice. And that's it, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, if you want to listen to more things, if you think I'm improving as well, look at my other videos, look at the video now. If, if you think I have value for you in the future, please subscribe, please like the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.